do we really need to use the Pythagorean theorem or just throw the formula at our students? The Pythagorean theorem, I think, is one of uh, those those skills, those formulas that we tell our students, ah, you know what, this is this is the rule, this works, hey, let's just use it to solve problems. But in this video, we're going to show you two things. We're going to show you one, that you actually don't need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the lengths of hypotenuses. No, you don't. And we're going to talk about that, what that looks like. Second is how you can develop the use of the Pythagorean theorem from the diagrams that I'm going to show you because you don't really need to use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, we want to develop that Pythagorean theorem because it becomes very efficient to use it. So stick around. Let's go to it. Okay, so let's take this problem for example here, and uh, let's let's uh, solve this problem. So let's solve this for this shaded area in this square. So uh, we've got a square here, a big square, and uh, there are this length here is five, this length is twelve. Um, we know that uh, this length over here will be five, this length is twelve. It's a square all the way around, and we've got this kind of diagonal square here. We're trying to find the shaded area. Let's let's explore this just for uh, a small moment here to find the area. So for example, strategy here would be find the big area. So the area of the large square, uh, that's uh, five and 12, that's 17. So that's 17 times 17 or 17 squared is our 289 square centimeters. That's our big area of the big square. We're gonna subtract out the uh, four congruent triangles here. So we're gonna find one triangle here um, with uh, with a base, uh, let's say the base of five and a height of 12. So five times 12 divided by two, we got 60 divided by two, we got 30 square centimeters for one triangle. And therefore uh, we're looking at uh, say all five triangles here, we're going to uh, have uh, 30 times, uh, uh, sorry, all four, four triangles, four is 120 square centimeters. All right. So we've got we've got those two. So our total combined area here for the shaded area would be to take the full area, the 289 square centimeters, subtract out the 120. This leaves us with 169 square centimeters. So this area right here is 169. So let's explore this just for a moment. We found this area. Now, if I wanted to find its side length, it is itself a square. Um, if these, this triangle is congruent to that triangle, then this length is equal to this length. So we have a square here, in fact, inside inscribed in this bigger square. And so this area of this square is 169 square centimeters. How will we find the length of the square? Or uh, I like to say it with my students, the root of the square. Um, what defines a square is its root. What root is it? It's the side length defines that square. Uh, therefore, let's, uh, let's call that the root of the square. How do we find that? Right, the square root. So the root of that square is squared 169 is 13. So we've just shown that this is 13 centimeters. But looky here, looky here. Um, we've got a right triangle here, um, and uh, let me just switch colors. Uh, this length over here is five, this is 12. We have just found that this length here is 13. Um, and so when you think about this, it's kind of like we found the hypotenuse length from this right triangle. And this kind of begs the question of, of using the Pythagorean theorem. We didn't use the Pythagorean theorem here to solve for this hypotenuse on this right triangle. We had this kind of set up to begin with. So now the question is, do we really need the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of an hypotenuse of a right triangle? So let's try to uh, answer that question. So let me, uh, let me draw a right triangle here. I'm gonna do a freehand right triangle here on my screen. Uh, let's say, let's uh, take a, a, a right triangle here and let's say we start with the right triangle, which is typically what, I, you know, your teachers or teachers are showing students to start with a right triangle. Uh, let's go with the, you know, the super easy uh, classic example. Uh, let's say this is three units high, four units uh, wide here or base length of this right triangle here uh, is four units wide. Um, now, the Pythagorean theorem, we would say, hey, we've got three squared, or I like to say draw the square off the side and find its area. You can draw this square off its side. This is what we would typically teach our student that is equivalent to the area off the hypotenuse side. Um, now, 
but another way to think about it, if you say uh, don't talk about the Pythagorean theorem first, you you explore this idea of of using areas to find uh, this length right here. Um, and if you've already kind of thought about or helped students do the previous problem and solving for the that kind of uh, shaded area, you can always kind of create that exact same diagram uh, from this one. So let me just uh, change color here. And let's say I draw the square off the hypotenuse just like so. And uh, let me uh, let me change color here a couple more times here. And so then what I can do is I can fill in that exact same diagram that I had before by completing all four triangles around the uh, the sides of that square that we created. And so if this is a three and this is four and this is then three and then four and then three and then four and we can say, look, the the length here is one of the lengths in the square right here and we want to find its area. So we could find its area by finding all the big area. So we could go, hey, this is three times uh, uh, or sorry, three plus four. I'm going to change that to a plus four. That's seven. And this is a seven by seven square. So my area of the big square is seven squared, which we get is 49 square units. And then uh, I have I have four congruent triangles. So four triangles of three by four divided by two. So that's uh, 12, six, 12, I got six times four is 24 units squared. And now I can subtract the two. And when I subtract the area of 49 and 24, voila, I get my 25 square units. This area is 25. And what will we do? We will find the root of that square to find its side length. Voila, we do not, we do not need the Pythagorean theorem. Now, even though we could solve all Pythagorean theorem problems, all lengths of the hypotenuse with, you know, redrawing this diagram, uh, the question is like, why why would we want to right like we, we we have this method we can work and we don't need the pythagorean theorem if we redraw this to solve this particular uh hypotenuse um but that brings up like why the pythagorean theorem exists in the first place because you could help students solve problems like this by finding the length here in this this diagram uh, but then you could help them understand that you could you could do this but you could in general let's say rearrange rearrange the the diagram um, to help prove the Pythagorean theorem, see where this comes from. So in this case, uh, if we label the hypotenuse C, and then all of a sudden we have the area of the big square is C squared, um, and then we label the other two's A's and B's, uh, the other two sides of the triangles A and B, we can see that if we rearrange those triangles, we could just take them and then rearrange them, and we create this space, right? The, the blue space has not changed. The blue space has not changed at all. But now you can clearly see that the big area left on the left uh, is b times b, which is b squared. And we're taking the, the, the area there and squaring it, we get b squared. And then the small little area is a squared, a times a, just from the rearrangement of those triangles. Uh, and that can clearly show that the two areas are the same. And hey, maybe we've developed a little shortcut here that these two squares on the sides uh, is equal to the big square as well. Now, if this exploration interested you and you want to dive a little bit more with your students uh, on the Pythagorean theorem and the development of the Pythagorean theorem and think about the proof of the Pythagorean theorem and get your students to walk through an activity that kind of is what we just did uh, in a short, very short way we did here, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to point you in the direction of uh, the the uh, Make Math Moments problem based units. So uh, you can head to learn.bakemathmoments.com forward slash tasks that gets you to the problem base units from Make Math Moments. Uh, from there, I'm gonna search into measurement. That was the task, uh, task strand. And I'm gonna find this task called squares to triangles. I'll put a link to this exact task below. And uh, I'm gonna hit that unit right there. 
that is going to open up the squares to triangles unit, which is a four day unit on this exact idea, actually. And I've, uh, I've, I've kind of dove in with you head first. Uh, however, you're going to kind of slowly ease in with your students. You can ask them to notice and wonder things about this diagram here, this very important diagram. Um, and then what we can do is once we've noticed and wondered, we could ask our students to say how many of these will fit, you know, how many of these little squares will fit in here. So starting to think about how what kind of area this will cover. And uh, from there, we can uh, then uh, we can then kind of keep going and asking our students uh, for more information. Say, look, if I gave you these, you know, this length and this length, and I, and I gave you this length down here, um, and this, these were squares, go ahead and find this area. So students are diving into this problem of finding the area by using the triangles around the edge to find out how many of these little squares will fit. Now, from there, we can do our magic uh, and uh, talk about uh, using this same diagram to find out length. So going into uh, some practice and some revealing uh, afterwards, uh, you can have our, your students find this area in different ways and start to make connections that the areas are the same if you rearrange them. Um, and eventually saying, I really don't need to draw, uh, if I want to say a side length, I can uh, find this hypotenuse, like I don't, I can really redraw this diagram to help find that side length. So that activity, that's day one of the activity. Day two, day three, day four, uh, extend and dive into triangles and using the Pythagorean theorem and developing the use, or uh, developing the Pythagorean theorem um, uh, from that, that visual. Uh, and looking at the areas of the squares. There's a math talk on day two with purposeful practice questions um, in the form of an appointment clock structure. So you can head to uh, that task. I'll put the link below so you can get to that task and uh, some of the handouts uh, to explore the Pythagorean theorem.